So um, uh, this is my eclipse experience. It's only five eclipses. It's not as many as a lot of people, but it has inspired me to do a lot of work to try to help other eclipse um, people or eclipse chasers enjoy the eclipses. And it's really an honor to um, share a Zoom presentation with Fred. And, and Fred, that was an excellent presentation. You know, I really enjoyed it. So back in 2001, that was my first eclipse and I prepared for it by reading Fred's book. And I was inspired by his pictures to want to do a sequence of totality and get Corona pictures. And you have to remember back in 2001, we didn't have YouTube and there was very little eclipse information on the internet to prepare from. So you had to use the eclipse books. And this is my book from 2000, 2001, Fred's totality book with all my little sticky notes still in it, where I was writing down exposure times for the different pictures that were in the books because I wanted to be successful. And for those of you who haven't gone back to the eclipse chasing days before we had internet maps, this is how you used to do it. You used to mail a self-addressed stamped envelope to Fred at Goddard Space Flight Center, and he would send you back the eclipse bulletin for that eclipse, which basically had paper maps and tables of the major cities with the contact times. And you would have to use these maps to kind of extrapolate what your contact times would be. They weren't exact. You couldn't just click on the map. So, Interactive maps, you know, Fred's map and Xavier's map are a total game changer in eclipse chasing where you can just click on a Google map and find out your contact times. It didn't used to be that way. It was what much harder back in the day and there was error. But as I was preparing for my eclipse in 2001, I already recognized that you had to have timing. You, you just couldn't do it by your watch. So back in the day, there was a little plastic Radio Shack kitchen timer that was a talking timer. When you programmed in the time you wanted to hear, it would talk a countdown to the end of that time. And the thing about it was it would repeat. So there was a little repeat mode. So if you put in a minute and 30 seconds, it would count down to a minute, 30 seconds, and then it would do it again, and then it would do it again. Um, so I realized that that might be able to help me at the eclipse. I knew my eclipse was three minutes and 53 seconds. So if I divided that in half, and if I started this timer a minute and 50 seconds before C2, it would ring at C2, and then it would ring at max eclipse, and then it would count down again at, th at C3. The problem was, is you had to remember to turn it on at a minute and 56 seconds before C2, and I forgot. So even though I had it programmed and it was ready, it didn't help me because I didn't use it. So here's why I got so passionate about helping people time eclipses. Because even though I practiced like crazy for this eclipse, doing the photography in, in my living room and just trying to practice my routine, this is my first picture going into C2 in 2001. And I'm late. This is chromosphere. So I'm already 20 seconds late at C2 because I had no idea what time it was going to start. And you're so overwhelmed by the event, you lose track of time. So I completely missed diamond ring and completely missed Bailey's beads. And my first picture is chromosphere. I did okay during totality. I got good corona, corona pictures in the middle. And then I'm sitting there in this field in Africa watching totality. And again, I have no idea what the time is. And it goes very quickly. And all of a sudden, it starts to get light in the sky. And this is my first picture after C3. And I'm already at diamond ring. So I'm 15 seconds late here. I've missed chromosphere and I've missed Bailey's beads. So when I got back to the States, I realized somebody had to do something about this for Eclipse photographers. And I developed the first talking timer and it ran on Windows Pocket PC at the time. And I sold it on the, uh, the app stores at that time. There were actually app stores for Windows programs, Windows downloadable programs. And it ran on an iPack 
what they used to call a personal digital assistance. This is the precursor to handheld phones. And it worked. The problem was it was completely manual because personal digital assistants didn't have geolocation. So you still had to get your times extrapolated from the paper maps and then plug your contact times in automatically. Uh, it would calculate your max eclipse time, but everything else had to be manual. And we used it in 2002. I went back to Africa in 2002 and used it in Zimbabwe and it worked fine but our manual calculation of the contact times was about five seconds late. So when I look at my videos of that eclipse and I listen to the audio, I can realize we're a little bit out of sync because again, we had to do manual contact times. Well then fast forward to getting ready for the 2017 eclipse. In 2009, the first iPhone was released and now we have these very powerful computers in our hands. So I'm just going to really quickly run through the features of the app. When you open the app, you get to the user uh, home screen. The first button goes to a built-in app tutorial. This is a nine-minute app tutorial where I talk you through the features of the app. So if you watch that first, you'll learn how to do this, this, use this app. The buttons pretty much go in order. If you follow these buttons all the way down, you'll be set up for what you need to do for the Eclipse. The next button is very important to have an app that's going to talk to you through the eclipse and tell you what to do. The audio has to be working, obviously. So I have three sound checks built into the app to make sure you have all of your settings turned on so volume for announcements and notifications will play. So there's two test audio files. One's a WAV file, one's an MP3 file. And then there's a very important test down here, which is the schedule a uh, test notification. Apps cannot stay on for three hours. So you have to have a way that a person can put their phone down or put it in their pocket, let it go to sleep. And then you have to remind them that a new Eclipse event is happening. So you have to use the notification systems in apps to send a notification to the user to to tell them to open their, get their phone out, open it up and get back to the app. Now notifications have, have become very complicated in new apps, uh, in the new uh, operating system. So I have a page on my website that has screenshots of all the possible ways you can turn off or turn on notifications in an app. And this is very labor intensive to support. Then there's the eclipses to time. So I started this in-app purchasing process in 2017. These are all still in the app. All of these eclipses, this app was used at, the last one successfully in Australia. But now these are in test mode, so people can't accidentally load the wrong data file for 2024. And if you want to buy the 2024 Eclipse, you have to purchase it through the in-app purchasing process. It's only $1.99. This is a very important feature of the app, and this is in the free version. You don't have to buy the Eclipse to take advantage of this. This has to do with way back in 2001, when I was practicing for my Eclipse, Fred had a video of an Eclipse out on the internet. It wasn't YouTube. It was just out there on the internet. And it was a really interesting video. I don't know the year that he recorded it. But he, you can hear him in the background of the pictures, the video being shown on, on in the video, and you hear him talking into the into the into the mic. And back in the day, Fred used to call his cameras Alpha and Beta, and he would call out the shutter time. It was really really exciting. So he would say, Alpha, four uh, hundredth of a second, Beta, one twentieth of a second, Alpha, one thousandth of a second, Beta. 800th of a second. It was so intense. Anyway, I back from that experience, I built in a video practice session in the app. So this is a four and a half minute video of my observing site from 2017. And it, it has a fixed totality time of two minutes. But the thing about it is, 
this will continue to resynchronize to your phone's system clock. So you can play this little practice video over and over and practice taking off your solar filter. You'll hear the announcements for when to take your glasses on. You'll hear the announcements for observe the horizon. You'll hear the announcement for max eclipse. You'll hear the timing announcements into C2 and C3. So in four and a half minutes, you can practice your photography routine in your living room and make sure that you can get all of your chores done in this two minute totality time so that during the four minute eclipse in 2024, uh, and, and you have two minutes to enjoy it with your eyes because you've practiced getting through all your photography if you are a photographer. This little session plays all of the eclipse announcements that the app is going to play in a compressed eclipse. It runs in an hour and 15 minutes, but it allows users to practice opening their phone when they get a notification and hearing and seeing how the phone will say all the announcements. And this is where all the magic happens for the app. This is the GPS data screen. If you have bought, to the, bought the eclipse and you've loaded that data set, when you get to your place in the path, you tap on get my GPS location. And the formula for calculating the contact times is in the app. It doesn't require the internet. And it will calculate your contact times here in universal time. And then when you tap load the contact times into the main timer, they will transfer to the main timer and they will be adjusted for your local time. And then once you do that, the timer is armed. If you do this before C1, sometime in the morning, the app is going to talk you through the entire eclipse. Now, there's one little issue right now. Since we're in standard time and the eclipse is in uh, daylight saving time, the, the, the times that get loaded into the main timer will be an hour early right now, but they will correct uh, after March 10th when we go to daylight savings time. So here it is. Once you get your, um, your universal times calculated, you load it, they correct for the local time that's in your phone. So whether or not you're on you know, central time or Eastern time or Mexican time or Newfoundland time, it will correct for those because it goes by the, GP, the GMT offset in your phone. This is really a good feature that I have in my app for first-time Eclipse photographers. I call it the partial phase image sequence calculator. For people who don't want to program, who don't own or don't want to program an intervalometer to get this sequence of partial phases during the Eclipse, my app will calculate contact times that if you take a picture at each of these 10 contact times before C2, and each of these 10 contact times after C2, you will get a perfect sequence of equally distributed percentage crescent phases. Uh, I have a, 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 web, a page on my website. You can download a PDF file so you can write down all these times for Eclipse Day. And it prevents you from needing to use an intervalometer and getting this nice sequence. And then new for 2024, is something called uh, photographer's mode. And so here we go, you know, 23 or 24 years later, since my eclipse in 2001, uh, Fred has was inspired me again when we reached out to each other and uh, considered putting a new mode in the app called photographer's mode, where all of the timing announcements, all of the announcements in the app are all about timing. So there's no announcements in the app that you would like for your family, like observe for temperature changes or take pinhole projection pictures or observe for sharp and fuzzy shadows or uh, observe for shadow bands. All of those wordy statements about partial phase phenomena is not something that Fred was interested in. He was just interested in times. So when you enable photographer's mode, the app only spits out times except for three other reminders, one is to remove solar filters. There's a marker, uh, a, an announcement about max eclipse, and there's an announcement to replace solar filters. And so that's what my app does. Uh, again, despite the fact that I've only had five eclipses in my eclipse chasing career, it has inspired me to reach out to people to try to help people, especially first time eclipse observers and first time eclipse uh, photographers. 
So I have my app. I have my book, which is available in three digital versions. And I have my YouTube channel, which has hours of YouTube videos that I've made about all the partial phase phenomena and how to photograph eclipses. And then I did want to mention, you know, that I've been inspired by a lot of people to do this work, you know, Fred and Bill Kramer, Rick uh, Feinberg, Alan Dyer, Mitzi Adams is, um, is an astrophysicist uh, in Huntsville here at Marshall Space Flight Center. So I certainly haven't done it on my own. There have been great people um, that have inspired me to do this work. And um, that's all I have for you, really.